tell us that Jesus is right in the middle of whatever is going on. Remember that Paul cast out a demon from a slave woman who was making lots of money for her owners. When they discovered that their money source had evaporated, Paul and Silas paid dearly. They were dragged into the marketplace, beaten and thrown into prison. Where was Jesus then? About midnight, as they were praying and singing, maybe something like this. No sword can shake my house home, while to thy fall I'm clean. If love is sword of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? There was a great earthquake. We know about earthquakes. Hmm. After Paul and Silas reassured the jailer that they would not escape, he was converted. The jailer was converted. He took Paul and Silas into his house, cleaned them up, and gave them food. Then he was baptized along with all his household. Jesus was there. The revelation to John was written during a time of intense persecution. Where was Jesus then? It is very important to study this book from beginning to end, and it is the end we hear today. The story told in the Revelation to John, like the stories in Acts, end with the decisive victory of Jesus over all evil. Revelation describes it as new heavens and a new earth, and the new Jerusalem. Then there is a word not used anywhere else in the Bible, and not in our translation, that occurs at the very end. It is Malamaha, Come, Lord Jesus. I made up a little tune to go with this. Maybe you can sing it with me. I'll sing it first. Important as that is, 
It is for our union and community, our collective union with Jesus, that he prays. Jesus is here with us now. He has a, at least a part of the here is at least a part of the answer to the question, where is Jesus? It is thought that the last verses of Revelation may have been the earliest invitation to baptism or more likely to communion. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let everyone who hears say, Come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. Here is the other part of the answer to the question, where is Jesus? Jesus is here as we receive him at this altar. Jesus gives his very self to us as a sign of his promise to be with us always, even to the end of the age and fulfills his desire that we be completely one, as he and the Father are one. Communion. And having received Jesus here, we go forth to all the places where we live, work, study, and play, to carry out God's mission in the world, knowing that we are Christ bearers, joined to Jesus' very presence, still working toward the goal of becoming completely one as he desires. So as we await the fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, we might do as the disciples were instructed, to wait in prayer and patience, in unity of heart and mind, ready to receive anew the promise of the Father, the gift of the Spirit. Now Jesus' presence is here and everywhere to guide us, to comfort us, to lead us into all truth. To this blessed and glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.